Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. This is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Let's have a word of prayer. We'll get right into today's Bible lesson. Father, we thank, thank you. Lord. We give you praise and we honor your word. And sir, we open our hearts for revelation from heaven, thank revealing you. Jesus. We're looking for Jesus today. We desire Jesus today. Our heart's full of Jesus today. And we thank you and bless you, sir. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. My, we have a wonderful broadcast for you today. I have two, not one, two beautiful young ladies on this <laughs> broadcast today. First of all, my lovely wife, Hello, Gloria. Everybody. Thank you very and much. The first time on this broadcast, wonderful, dear friend of Gloria and mine for many, many years, Ms. Marilyn Hickey. Marilyn, Thank God you. bless you, Welcome darling. Marilyn. Thank you so much for being on this broadcast. I love today. getting to do this. We go back, Gloria and me and Marilyn and Wally go back a long time. That's true. We first, uh, oh my goodness, in the early 80s, when, when I, f I f first uh, I saw you, um, I met you, uh, I can just see it, but uh, Father, help me remember what that was. Anyway, and then I heard you speak. I think it was a full gospel businessmen's meeting. Anyway, I, I thought, my, my, that woman will teach you something if you listen to her. And you've taught us so much and been so wonderful in our lives all these years. And Thank we are you. so blessed to have Praise you Praise God. Today. Thank you. You know, you dedicated our building. I remember that. And I remember that too. And I remember the prophetic things that were spoken. So I'm very delighted, very honored to be here. And you have fed me faith through the years. And that's so important. Praise God. And I love that scripture. It says, since we have the same spirit of same faith. Same spirit of faith. According to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. And amen. we believe in spirit, <laughs> to say the least. Yes, amen. But Praise Kenneth God. and Gloria, I'm very excited about this because I want people to get into the Bible and the Bible to get into yes, them. Yes, that's right. And you know, as we behold him, we are changed into his image and we go from glory to glory. So when I look at the Bible, I see Jesus in every book of the Bible over and over. And I think there are probably at least 66 levels of glory because there are 66 books of the Bible. And so my passion, my heart is to get people to read through the Bible and the Bible to read them. And that gives you a life that is victorious. You said something last night when we were having dinner yeah. together that just, uh, it, it sparked something in, in me that going through the Bible, if you're just reading just to be reading, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of things in here, particularly when you first begin to study right. it, and in particularly in, in the Old Covenant, and you, you think, what am I doing here? I mean, but when you're specifically looking for something or for somebody. Right. And I, I, that really ministered to me last night, and I, and I went back thinking about over the years, uh, we've been in this ministry for 47 years now, and, and I was thinking about, particularly when we first began there at Oral Roberts University. Right. The Lord dropped it in my heart. I started out looking for faith. I was looking for faith everywhere I read. Yes. And then, um, there, and over the years you do the, but then the most magnificent thing is to go through the Bible looking for Jesus. Exactly, exactly. When you find him, you find faith. When you find him, you find your healing. When you find him, you find your prosperity. When you find yes. him, you, what is it you need? What is it you got to have? Jesus is the answer. Absolutely. And you know what I love is Psalm 51, 6. It says, Thou, God, desires truth in the inward man, 
and in the hidden man you will make me to know wisdom. Oh, so, yes. what is truth? Yes. Truth is your Bible. Where is God looking for it? On the coffee table? Under the bed? On top of the refrigerator? No. He's looking for truth in here. Yes. So as we read the Word, we're putting truth in here. Then he says, I'll take the truth and make it wisdom up here. So no truth in here, no wisdom, no up, wisdom here. up here. Yeah, and we to have it. to have it. So I'm from Texas. I'm a Texan. My mother always canned in the summertime. My brother and I hated it. It was hot. We had to sterilize the jars. We had to peel the peaches. Ugh. But we didn't hate it in the wintertime. When she unscrewed the lid of a jar of home canned peaches, oh. it was better than kissing your husband. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was so great. And I think that's what happens with the Bible. Sometimes we read it and we think, oh, I'm not getting that much out of it. But we're putting truth in here. We're canning it. And many times in the wintertime of my life, you know, God has brought the truth in here and made it wisdom up here. Amen. But if I hadn't canned it, sometimes in times that, you know, I didn't feel I was getting so much, I wouldn't have the wisdom for up here. So I really want to see people seeing Jesus in every book of the Bible because he's in every book. And I think sometimes we think, well, you know, I don't read the Old Testament. And so they're profitless, you know, because Jesus is so revealed in the prophets. He's so revealed in the Pentateuch. He's so revealed in all of the history, all of the kings, all of those things. And so if we can go through the Bible and see Jesus, that's transformational. It is. And that's putting truth inside that can the Holy Spirit can come and make it wisdom for the occasion. So what I have basically done is I have looked at the Old Testament and broken it into four parts. And I want to mark what those four parts are because I think if people can see this, if you can see this, it can really get you hooked on the book. It's not just you're reading the Bible. The Bible's reading you. So I'm going to mark these and, you know, I, I'm not the best writer. So you say, you sure scribble and think about this. I used to be a school teacher. And so, but I didn't write well then either, but I write well. Kim, enough. would you help Marilyn set her, her board up, please? We're going to put her to work. I'll tell you, I want to get into this. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. And I think you are going to be very excited as you see hey, I can get hooked on the book and the book can get hooked into me. So what I have done, and I've looked at this a lot in the Old Testament, I've looked for Jesus in the Pentateuch. And that's important for us because we say, well, what's the Pentateuch? Basically, it's the first five books. That's all it is. Don't get nervous. Is Jesus in Genesis? Oh, absolutely. Is he in Exodus? Is he in Leviticus? Is he in Numbers? Is he in Deuteronomy? Yes. And if you behold Jesus as you're reading through the Bible, see, then you begin to receive the life and the revelation. The second part I like so much, and you will love this as we're into this, is the history. You know, you say, well, what's the history of the Bible? Well, actually, it's Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. Those are all history books. And Jesus, oh, Jesus shows up in all of the history because why? It's people. And I don't know how you are, but I know how I am. People examples is like a window for me. I can see how it worked or how they didn't work it well and see how that applies to my life. We all like people's stories. You're going to love this as we go into the history. But then if I look at the third section, oh, I look at the wisdom books. And I have never met anyone who wants to be stupid. I've never met anyone who said, <laughs> oh, I'd love to be stupid. People want to be wise. And there are five wisdom books. And also there are poetry books they would sing them, you know, they would put them in an opera and so on. So we see the wisdom books are Job. Job was written as a play. 
And then we look at Psalms. Oh, where do we get in Psalms? You won't want to miss any of this. And then we get in Proverbs. Who doesn't like Proverbs? Everybody likes Proverbs. It's a wisdom book. It's a how-to. But then we have Ecclesiastes, which kind of deals with depression and oh hum attitudes and get you back into faith. And did you know Song of Solomon was written to be an opera? And so we have these wonderful wisdom books. But as I said, so many people are profitless because they don't read the prophets. They say, I don't understand them. It's too difficult. I just can't get it. And Jesus is in every one of the prophets. So this is going to be a wonderful time that we have together, Kenneth and Gloria, because you're going to get hooked on the book and the book will transform you. Now let's just look at Genesis for a moment. Genesis, does it have Jesus in there? Oh, yes, because I show you in this wonderful beholding Jesus who he is in Genesis. Do you know he shows up right away? He's the seed of the woman and will crush the head of the serpent. Seed of a woman? Wait a minute. Women don't carry seed, but this is a virgin, and this is the first time we see the virgin birth is in the book of Genesis. Wow. And so I show you how I give you the outline of the book and how Jesus is in the book of Genesis. I show you not only how he is, but what he does and the transformational part of Genesis to you. But then when we look at Exodus, oh my, he is really an Exodus because I love this. Look at the Passover lamb and look at the way they set up the tabernacle. I mean, the tabernacle, so unusual you, because we see that in the outer court, they had a big bronze altar and then they had a big brass laver where they washed and the priest could see his face in that brass laver and the Bible is a mirror. We see ourselves. Then they went into the holy place and they had the lamp stand. Oh, so this was covered, but they had light. Out here, we had natural light. In here, we had the lamp stand. Then we had the table of shoe bread with the 12 loaves on it. And we had the golden altar of incense. So the priest would go in here. He had light. He could pray over the 12 tribes. He could bless them, call in their manna, call in their food, call them into prosperity. He could intercede for them. But once a year, he went into the Holy of Holies and there was the Ark of the Covenant and the mercy seat. And so this was two pieces of furniture, kind of looks like one, but it's two. Now look at this. Jesus is our altar. He is the lamb who died in our place. This is the biggest piece of furniture. Jesus is the washing of the water of the world. Oh, Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus ever lives to make intercession for us. Jesus kept the covenant. And where does Jesus Thanks sit? God. Does he sit on the seat of condemnation? No, <laughs> no, no. No, no, no. He sits on the mercy seat. Now look at the shape of this. Look at it. It's the shape of a cross. Mama, glory. I love this. <laughs> glory. Because I see how the revelation of Jesus, how do you understand the Passover that it refers to in the New Testament if you've never read Exodus? But then when you go into Leviticus, mm, that shows him as our great high priest and it shows us how to approach him. Now, I don't know how you are. I'm not just wild over Leviticus. You know, I read through the Bible every year, but sometimes... Kenneth, when I hit Leviticus, I think, <laughs> read fast and get through it. I want to get through it. But if you can see Jesus and the provisions of his priesthood. If you're looking for him. Yes, 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 yes. You will love it. And I show you, you know, in this wonderful Jesus encounter, how to see Jesus, our great high priest. But what about numbers? Well, numbers is like a history. And so... You know, we need to go back and look and rehearse history because 
David said, I've killed a lion. I've killed a bear. The Lord help me. I'm going to kill a giant. And Numbers is the history of them in the wilderness. And I get so excited about this because if you remember, Balaam was hired to curse the Israelites. So he comes to Balak. You know, Balak's going to give him a lot of money if he'll do it. He goes up on a mountain to curse the Israelites and he blesses them. Oh, Balak is so upset with him. I told you to curse them. Well, let's go and look at it from a different direction. So he goes, maybe he went to the west first, then he goes to the east, builds an altar, doesn't curse them. And then he said, Balak said, man, I'm not paying you a dime if you don't get with it. So he takes him to the south and he blesses them. He takes them to the north and he blesses them. Mm. Balak said, I told you I wanted you to curse them. And here's what Balaam says, I cannot curse what God That's has blessed. Right. Now, what did he see? Now, let's look at this. What did he see? He saw the tabernacle in the center because they camped all around the tabernacle. They had three tribes to the north, three tribes to the south, three tribes to the east, three tribes to the west. He can't curse the cross. The cross <laughs> took our curse. Yes. And so we see Old Testament constantly the picture of the cross. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's so encouraging to me because I think sometimes people say, well, you know, if you go to a medical doctor, and I'm not against this, they want to know the history. Did your father die of such and such? How old? You know, did your mother have allergies and all those kind of things? But, you know, I have a new father. That's right. I'm in the cross. Um, and the cross took the curse, but it didn't just take the curse. It gave me the blessing. And so, wow, we, we see this wonderful Jesus, again, portrayed the cross of how it would take all of our curse, but not just take the curse, but give us all of his blessings. You cannot curse what God has blessed. So the enemy and people try to do something against you. You're in Jesus and you get the blessing. And I would have to tell you, I am 82 and a half. No, yeah, 82 and a half. I have to think about it. I've been more blessed in my 80s than in my 30s. Why? I'm in the cross. I'm in Jesus. I'm in Jesus. And Praise Jesus God. blesses us. And it's in you. Yes. It is in you. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. yes. The last one, Deuteronomy. Oh, Deuteronomy is wonderful because Deuteronomy really stresses the word. And Jesus is the word made flesh. Mm. And so this is so key to us that we see all through. It's just three sermons, but it all emphasizes the word, Kenneth, mm -hmm. Gloria. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Shall oh, we just talk about it a little bit? Absolutely. <laughs> praise God. Amen. Marilyn, we're in a new time. Yeah. Um, the time from here to here, yeah. we're right here. Yeah. yeah, I believe that. We're in the maps. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we're in the maps. I mean, we're, we're, we That's have late. finished this thing. <laughs> and if you, it, and you know, it, when you read it and you look at it, this whole thing is for and by him. Right. It's Jesus in the beginning. It's Jesus. It's a revelation of Jesus. Right. The book of Revelation is a revelation of Jesus. Right. So when you see this, this entire thing, we're involved in God's holy victory right. over right. all right. the curse, over right. every evil thing, yes. every evil, wicked spirit. Exactly. Praise God. Exactly. And we're blessed to be in on the end time. Oh, yeah. We are so blessed. Amen. And, you know, I think, I, I know my father had a mental breakdown 
And so when I was about 36, the enemy began to talk to me. He said, you look like your father. Uh, you act like your father a lot, and you're going to have a mental breakdown. And I just cried out to God. I said, God, help me. I'm just like my father. He said, that's right. You're just like your father. I'm your father. <laughs> so I never had a mental like breakdown. He never had a breakdown. That's had excellent. You. And you never will either. No, praise God. So I, I love this, that we have a new father. We have a Savior, and That's He's not right. just out here. He's in yeah. here. And so as we look at Him, as we behold Him in the Bible, He transforms us. But He doesn't just transform us. He takes us from glory to glory. I got saved at 16. I would say I've lived in glory to glory to glory Amen. to glory. Oh, yeah. And there's one other book I want to just talk about a little bit because I want to go into that second segment that we had on the board of the history. Because when you start the history, so many people think you don't see Jesus, but you do. If you look at Joshua, Joshua even means Jesus. I, I want to read this scripture in the book of Hebrews. The Lord just dropped this in my heart this morning about what we're doing. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, mm -hmm. who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him or be fixed on him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your mind. And this is the time of people fainting in their minds. It is. And you were talking yesterday, right at the close of the broadcast, how your daddy had fainted in his mind. He had a right. breakdown and the devil can yeah. after you to try to get you to That's accept right. the thing, same thing. But the thing we're, we've been talking about here, we're looking to Jesus, right. looking at Him yes. in every book of the Bible, True. seeing Jesus. Praise yes. God. This yes. is what we're doing. Open your eyes right now. The name of Jesus, your eyes are blessed. Yes. Your ears are blessed. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. And I love this, Kenneth and Gloria, because when you see Jesus in every book, so many times I think Christians don't read the Old Testament. Uh, maybe Psalms, Proverbs, they like that, but skip the prophets. And so they're really prophetless. And Jesus is in every book of the prophets. So wonderful. Jesus is all of the Pentateuch, all of the history. <laughs> and so I... I'm hooked on the book, and I guess I want everybody else to get hooked on the book too. Amen. And I told yesterday about Psalm 51, 6, that thou, God, desires truth in the inward man, and in the hidden man he will make us to know wisdom. Now, truth, what is truth? This is truth. Yes, it we is. can hear a lot of intellectual things, but really, this is truth. That's what Jesus said. He yes. said, your word is truth. He didn't say the truth. He said, your word is yes. truth. That's Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Oh. But where is God looking for this Bible? <laughs> He's looking for truth in your heart. Why? Because you can put it on your coffee table. I love the Bible, but never read it. You can put it under the bed. But when you read the Bible and you see Jesus in every book of the Bible, what are you doing? You're putting truth inside. Then he says he'll take that truth you put in here He'll make it wisdom up here. So we need to see Jesus in every book Praise of the God. Bible. We need to put truth in here. Then when the time comes that we need the wisdom of it, it's already in here, then he can bring it up here. Now, I have a real easy way for you to see Jesus in the Old Testament because I am so, what can I say, focused that every Christian needs to read through the Bible because the Bible reads you. And that's what we want. We mm. want that personal revelation of Jesus. So I'm going to do a little quick review of Old Testament so that you can see how it breaks down into four segments. Now, I have found if you know where you're going, you know when you get there. No, that's right. So 
I believe, you know, in this that I've made, ooh, I've made you see Jesus in every book of the Bible. And the Pentateuch is the first part of what we see. So we see that the Pentateuch just means five books. You see him in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. He's in all of that. And we see the cross and we saw this yesterday. But also we have the history books. And so we see when we get into Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, that's history. And so we see a lot of people's lives in it. And oh, oh, when you see who Jesus is in the book of Esther, I'm telling you, you'll want to fly away. It's just amazing how he shows up and reveals his glory in all of these books. But then we see also there are the wisdom books, five of them, and we'll be also looking at those today. And we see that Job is a wisdom book. Job, honestly, Job is one of my favorite books because it reveals Jesus in the greatest way almost of any book of the Bible. Then we see Psalms, everybody likes Psalms. We see Proverbs, he's absolutely in Proverbs. He's in Ecclesiastes, oh, he's a great shepherd. And then we see him, he is in the opera of Song of Solomon and it shows the intimacy that we have with him. But prophets, hey, I think people don't read the prophets and they're profitless. And when you see Jesus in Isaiah, ooh, it is so powerful. When you see Jesus in Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Daniel, oh, Daniel's one of the greatest revelations of Jesus. You say, well, those are major prophets. What makes them major? They just wrote longer books. Yeah, and then we right. see <laughs> the minor prophets just means they wrote shorter books. But some of the sweetest revelation of Jesus is in the prophets. You just can't afford to miss that. So today I want to just start with history. And I'm only going to take one. Of course, you know, I have all of these 66 books who he is in a wonderful way for you to see him. But I want to take Ruth. You know, Ruth shows Jesus in, as a kinsman redeemer. If you remember this story, Naomi and her husband left Bethlehem because there was a famine. Bethlehem is the house of bread. Why would you go to Moab? Moab worship an idol called Chushan Rish Tham, I believe. Uh, no, he's called Chimas. And what is that? That's a dunghill deity. Why would you go there? They have two sons. The two sons marry women who are idolatresses, who worship Chimash. And then the sons die. The husband dies. And so Naomi decides to go back and she tells her daughters-in-law goodbye. And Ruth said, I'm going to go where you go. Your God is going to be my God. And so they go back to Bethlehem and Ruth is a believer. She was an idolatrous. She is a Moabitess, but she is now a believer. And so watch the favor of God in this. So Naomi says to her, you need to go and pick grain up for us in a relative's field. His name is Boaz. And so they pray that she will have favor. I love this. And then Boaz notices her and knows who she is. And God gives her favor. And Naomi tells her how to catch a husband. <laughs> so, you know, I think this is in Ruth 3.3. If you're a single woman today, she said, buy a new dress, take a bath, and get some Estee Lauder. Well, maybe you like a different perfume. <laughs> and so she tells her, and so she begins to give her advice because this is a kinsman. And if a kinsman ha has the name, you know, is in the genealogy or lineage of your dead husband, he can, if he has the money, buy the property that belonged to the dead husband. He's the kinsman. He has the money to redeem the property back. But when he marries her, the firstborn child, this is the Leverett Law, it's in Old Testament, the firstborn child will have the name of the dead husband. Mm. Well, how many men are just waiting to pick up a widow like that? 
But Boaz takes her on and she goes to sleep or he goes to sleep after the threshing time. She lays down at his feet, pulls his robe over on her. Now, this is not an immoral situation at all. He wakes up and says, who is it? She said, I'm Ruth. And, you know, uh, you're a kinsman to my dead husband. Would you be willing to be my covering? And Boaz is willing to be her covering. And so he marries her and they have Obed and Jesse and David. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, watch out. She's in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's right. Now, think about this. He's her kinsman. He put up the price. And then if you notice, her name is in the genealogy of Jesus in Matthew 1. But so is Boaz. Oh, Boaz shouldn't have been there. That first child was to go to her dead husband. But God said, forget it. Boaz is such a man of faith. And he puts Boaz's name in there. Now, how is this Jesus? Jesus said, how can I redeem them? I have to come in the flesh. I have to come in the flesh. And I have to pay the price. I have to die for their sin. And so Jesus came in the flesh to be our kinsman. He redeemed us by his blood because he never sinned. He arose from the dead. He understands everything you're going through. I love this. He understands everything I'm going through because he's related. He was tempted in the flesh and he ever lives to make intercession for me. And he bought me back. He forgave all my sins with his blood and he gave me a new nature. And so when I look at Jesus and Ruth, I think this is one of the sweetest books in the whole Bible. But when I look at this, I have to say to you, there is a special place here as we go into the history beyond Ruth, when we go into First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, that we began to see kings of the northern kingdom, kings of the southern kingdom. And it gets confusing. You think, who's who, what's where? And I have wonderful charts that show you the kings of the northern kingdom, you won't get confused. Trust me, put your hand on your heart. Say, I trust you, Marilyn. And you will see the kings of the southern kingdom and you'll say, who's good and bad? Well, on this, I have a G after all the good kings and a B after all the bad kings. But even more, I have the prophets that prophesied to those kings. And you will find all kings have at least two prophets because in the mouth of two or three witnesses, mm. everything is established. And so that is wonderful. It'll get your, I think sometimes your brain is scrambled when you read First and Second Kings. You think, wow, First and Second Chronicles, who's who, where's where? But this will unscramble that. And also, it will show you how profitable the prophets are. Oh, you will love this. And then... Let's just go into the wisdom books real quickly. Uh, let's look at Psalms. Psalms is very unique because actually it is divided like the Pentateuch. So they had Psalms, you know, that they called Genesis Psalms. So like Psalms 1 through 42, they say, well, I want to sing something about the foundation of God, that he's solid, I can depend on him. Well, I'll go to the Genesis Psalms. But then you go from 42 on over into the 70s and you see these are called Exodus Psalms. You say, well, why would they be divided like that? Because you're going to sing them to help you. <coughs> and they would read them to help them. And so they would go to Exodus for deliverance because Jesus delivered them in Exodus from Egypt, set them free and bless them with prosperity and a future home. I mean, amazing. So you say, I want to get free of depression today. Well, I'll read one of those Psalms. I'll sing one of those Psalms. I want to get free of a bad habit today. Oh, I'll go to the Exodus Psalms and I'll sing that. I'll pray that. But then when you go to the number Psalms, he rehearses history with you. 
And so they would say, well, we just need to remember how good God was to us. What did he do in the wilderness for us? And so what does he do to just bless me in my past? And folks, sometimes we need to go back and rehearse our victories. David said, I've killed a lion, I've killed a bear, I'm going to kill you, Goliath. And I believe when you get in the number of Psalms, it helps you to rehearse victories. When things are bad, I just rehearse victories. God did this. He got me into Iran. They didn't kill me. I'm invited back. <laughs> you know, he put me on Kenneth and Gloria's program with a Jesus encounter, and I go through the victories. And that's very key for us to look at the victories and number of Psalms tells you that. But you say, well, what about the Leviticus Psalms? Oh, the Leviticus Psalms show the priesthood of Jesus. How do I come into his presence? Who is he? How wonderful he is. You know, he is the great high priest. So I want to know how to behave in his presence. I want to know how to worship him. You know, I want to know how to have the mind of Christ. Because remember, the high priest wore that big headdress and it said, holy unto the Lord. Oh, I want to have his mind. So each of this breakdown, like the Pentateuch, is showing us Jesus in the most beautiful way. But the Deuteronomy Psalms, I guess I would have to say I like them the best because their emphasis is the Word. Psalm 119 is in the Deuteronomy Psalms. And so you see, man, the Word works. You know, Deuteronomy was basically three sermons about the Word. And so I can go to the Deuteronomy Psalms. Oh, I can go to Psalm 119. Actually, I memorized it. It took me a year. But I the emphasis. My, my, my. Oh, I, I don't know how you did it in a year. Well, <laughs> grace, that's how you did that it. That was in the a year. grace of God, that's <laughs> yes. for sure. Amen. And so you see, this is all set up for us so that we can pick out the Psalms we need for the occasion. And New Testament says, speaking to yourself in Psalms and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart yeah, to the Lord. Yeah. Because we see Jesus in the Psalms. That is so key for us to see He is in those wisdom books. You know, He's in Proverbs. Oh my. He's in Job. He's in Ecclesiastes as the great shepherd. He's in the Song of Solomon as an opera and the intimacy we have with Jesus. You know, Kenneth, sometimes I look at these books and I think, wow, I didn't see that until I started looking for Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it gave me a glory to enter into that I had not had. It's wonderful. I was thinking of two things. One, Boaz, very influential man. Yes. Very wealthy man. Very. And um, here is Ruth, very poor, yeah. undone, and uh, they, they went through all of the things that you talked about there. Yeah. But he gave them his name. Mm -hmm. His name. Yeah. I mean, you could, you could give someone your property and, and all of that, and hold back your name in case they didn't turn out just right. right. But, you know, but Jesus just gave us everything Praise he has, God. gave us his spirit, gave us his kingdom, and, and just, just really just dumped it all on a bunch of people that had zero. And see, I think the generation blessing is in this. Oh, I don't, I, yes, Look at absolutely. Oh, Jesse, David, oh, yeah. all these. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. And yeah. shows you in the New Testament what it is. You know, so I, I look at Ruth. It's such a sweet little book. But I say, you know, you can do the expected. That's what uh, Orpah did. Well, I'm not yeah, going to go with yeah, you. I yeah, like, she, you know, the food here and I like the mm -hmm. idols. But Ruth did the exceptional. Faithful. She's faithful. And when you do the exceptional, God does the extraordinary. Oh, absolutely. I love this about God. What is the exceptional? It's faith. Yes. When you walk yeah. out in faith, yeah. what happens? 
You're not like the rest of the world. No, You're that different. That separates you from everybody else. It does. And when the whole world calls you crazy because you stepped out in faith, right? That sets you apart with God. It does. But watch God do the extraordinary. Did you ever dream you would be reaching the whole world at no. your age? No. Did you? No. Would you say that's extraordinary? Yes. But did it start when you walked in faith? Yes. And yes. so this book shows us the expected. We can do the expected. We can live like the world. You know, I like this about Ruth and Boaz. She didn't sleep with him that night. Mm -mm, no. I mean, in the world, you know, anymore, that's exceptional. And people want an exceptional marriage mm -hmm. and then sleep around it. If you want the extraordinary, do the faith thing. My, my, my. Oh, my. Marilyn is just wonderful. Good. Praise God. This actually... You know, let, let me go back to the scripture now where we started. Consider him. Think about him. Put your mind on Jesus. Consider him. Yeah, but, you know, uh, the economy. No, don't consider the economy. Consider Jesus. Right. Well, yeah, but, you know, this happened in my family. Qu stop considering all, of the, all, all that other stuff and get your mind, get your eyes and your ears on the Word and look for Him in the Word. He is the Word. You look for Him in the Word. And as you do, it begins to strengthen your spirit and your mind then will not become weary and faint. And that is vitally super important mm -hmm. in the kind of time that we live in. Amen? Praise God. All, all of glory in my time. We, we got saved within a couple of weeks of one another mm -hmm. during the first year of our marriage. And both of us scripturally illiterate. So thank God we didn't have anything to unlearn, you know. <laughs> so um, T.L. Osborne told me one time, said, Kenneth, you're blessed. You were born free. <laughs> so, so, but Gloria had a heart hunger for the word from day one. And I was lazy. I didn't want to study anything. But she got into the Word, and she was from that day till this, because of the Word, very, very stable. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said to me back there those years ago, she said, He said, she is to you what temper is to steel. Mm. Without tempering, steel is brittle. Right. And it was the Word, and knowing Jesus in the Word yes. that Praise stabilized Jesus. this yeah. family and yeah. ministry. And I am so impressed with this work that you've done, Marilyn, to, to give us this tool and the tools to work with to see Jesus in every awesome. book yeah. of the Bible. Right. Every one of them. Right. It doesn't start in the New Testament. No. It starts, He was there. Right. He was there. In the first chapter, in the first verse, right, and he's there. In the last chapter, right. in the last book, in the last verse. That's the reason when you read this book, we win. Exactly. We win. Exactly. You've blessed us. You know, I love that in 2 Corinthians 2.14. says, thanks be to God who always, 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 always leads Always. us to triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. And this is what I tell the devil. The game is not over till I win. That's right. You know, because a lot of times it doesn't look like you're winning, but that's not what the Bible says. Right. Plus, we wear a perfume. You know, when you win, you stand in faith. It's a it's a fragrance. Oh, it is. I want to smell like faith. <laughs> <laughs> and the Bible like it doesn't victory. let you smell like defeat. No, it doesn't. It not. makes you smell like faith. And I love this because Jesus is in every book of the Bible. Every book of the Bible. And I have put this together over 30 years for people to see Jesus. I even have a little picture of who he is in that book. Like in Genesis, he's the seed of the woman. So I have a seed, you know, above. Like in Exodus, he's the Passover lamb. And so I have a lamb. In Leviticus, he's the high priest. So mm -hmm. I have a picture of the 
high priest. Well, and the Spirit of the Lord has uh, in, instructed me to say something right okay. This woman, by faith, has walked across more national borders and has been a, a, a very, very important word carrier about Jesus in places where he's never even been heard of and in places that most Christians absolutely would never even think about going, much less going in there and preach about Jesus. I mean, the, all over the Middle East, she has taken, God has instructed her to go places like Iran, Egypt, the different nations with, with the, the courage and the faith. When she said that a moment ago, I want to smell like faith. Well, I want to tell you something. <laughs> that, that, this is the kind of faith. After her husband had gone home to be with the Lord. Now, this, this is important. Instead of just going and sitting down and saying, well, you know, um, Wally's gone home and I, th I thank God for him and I thank God for that. Well, you know, I can, no, no, not Marilyn. No, she takes off for the Middle East. She heads off into all of these different places to preach the word and God's opening doors. This is the woman that is leading us in a study of finding Jesus in every book of the Bible. Now, she said just there a moment ago, this is a 30-year work, and that's the reason she's been very successful in all of these different nations, in all of these different tribes and tongues and, and, and peoples of the world because she knows Jesus Praise and God. she knows the book. You can be the same. You can be the same. God is no respecter of persons, but he is a respecter of faith and he's a respecter of the scripture. So you need to get in here now. Praise Amen. God. And get with it. Glory <laughs> to God. Amen. We're looking again at the Old Testament. And so I just, we're at the last part on our program of Old Testament. But I want to look up here again. I like to do a little bit of review here sure. with you. And I want you to see that he is in the, Pen in the Pentateuch. Absolutely. The first five books of Old Testament are Pentateuch. Oh, he's so wonderful. We've been looking at that, studying it, letting it, him get inside us and show, his, show us his glory. Then we've looked at history. We looked at Ruth and how the kinsman redeemer is so revealed. And then we've looked at wisdom with the Psalms. Psalms is a wisdom book. And so we have five wisdom books, but today we're looking at the prophets. And I don't like to say this, it's kind of ugly, but I think that most people are Christians, are prophetless. They say, oh, I don't read the prophets, they're too hard to understand. But you're missing Jesus because he's in the prophets as beautifully as any of the books of the Bible. Look at Isaiah, Isaiah 53, Isaiah oh, yeah. 54. My, my, my. I mean, my, he's yes. all these things in Isaiah. But today I want to look at a minor prophet because I think most of you are kind of turned on. You might read Isaiah. But <laughs> what about these minor prophets? Are, does that mean they're not so smart? No, 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 no. Just means they wrote less. And so I have a gorgeous picture of Jesus in Hosea for you today. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the most beautiful pictures in the whole Bible because it's acted out in a family situation. And so we see Hosea, which really has to do with salvation, but it's a picture book for us. God tells him to marry Gomer. Gomer had been a prostitute, but it appeared that she'd kind of turned her life around. And they have a child named Jezreel. That means planted by God. And so, you know, it looks like they're real happy. She's okay. But then she goes back to her prostitution. And two more children are born. And wow, I mean, when I look at these, I think, oh, this is so sad. Because she has a child called Loami and Loruhema. 
Now, lo, think about this. Lo in front of a, a name means no or not. So lo ruhema means you're not mine. And lo ami means I'm not going to have mercy on you. So these two children are not his. Whose are they? Who knows? She's sleeping around. But he raises them. You know, she brings them home for him to raise. So he has one natural born, two who are not. They don't know who they are. But in the second chapter, it takes the low off in front of the names. <laughs> Ruhama, I, mean, like, I yeah, will have mercy. I know who did that. Yeah. <laughs> and I, that you know, so you good. are mine. Oh, and my, this, my. Yeah. This, think about this. One believing mate sanctifies the household. Yes. And Hosea oh, is believing for these children. So he says to his children, go tell your mama to come home. Because the children are saying, we're tired of Campbell's soup and frozen dinners. <laughs> and he said, go tell your mama you're tired. And the Lord says to him, you cannot reason with them according to natural affection. Because in Hosea 4.11, it says, new wine and harlotry take away the heart or the affection. And so folks, you know, you may be involved with someone who's an alcoholic, a drug addict. Uh, you may be involved with someone who's into prostitution. And so you try to reason with them. What about your children? What about me? They don't have natural affection. That takes it away. But God, God has an answer. So he says to Isaiah, let her go. I'm going to deal with her. I will deal with her. And so suddenly she becomes very distasteful to her lovers. Probably one of the men said to another man, she doesn't use right guard. Ugh. She doesn't shave her legs. Ugh. And so she begins to be dropped. She just ugly. <laughs> She's ugly <laughs> by her lovers. And she ends up on a slave block. And he goes and buys her back. Isn't that? And oh. then... I All love right. what he says to her, Kenneth mm -hmm. Gloria. Oh, my he God. said, you know, he said, don't call me Bailey, master, because he owns her now. I yeah. mean, if she steps out on him as a slave, he can kill her. It's legal. He said, don't call me Bailey. I'm not your master. Call me Ishi. I'm your husband. Oh, man. You know, and it oh, never man. says anymore, never says that she stepped out on him. Now, this is Jesus all the way. We're on a slave block. You know, all our sins put us out there. We don't have maybe the right affections that we should have. But he comes. We were just ugly. We're ugly. <laughs> we're ugly. We were just That's ugly. That's for sure. That's right. And he comes and buys us back and doesn't say, I'm your master. I've got you now. He said, I'm your husband. I've redeemed you. I've that, brought you, you back. You know what? That goes back to what we saw with Boaz. He gave her his name. Yes. Yes. Jesus yes. has given us his name. That's Praise right. God. And it doesn't say ever again she got involved in a mess because Jesus set you free. Yes. And so they don't have natural affection. Maybe you're believing for a mate or a friend or something. They don't have natural affection. Hey, Jesus knows how to get them back. Well, what about these children? Lo Ruhema. They're Ruhema. And you see, God sanctifies the family because he wants the generation blessing. So Hosea is a beautiful picture of Jesus Christ, one of the most beautiful of all. And as we go through these minor prophets and we see who Jesus is, it is amazing. But the major prophets give you a lot of the names of Jesus. For example, Jeremiah said, he's Jehovah to sit canoe. <laughs> <laughs> he's the Lord our righteousness. You just can't miss Jesus in that, can you? And then Ezekiel at the very end with all of his crises and problems and acting out all the things God has him act out, said he's Jehovah Shama. Yes. He is with me. He never leaves me nor forsakes me. And so you say, oh, I don't read the prophets. Oh, you don't want to be prophetless. You want to see who Jesus is in every book of the Bible. And remember, 
as we behold him, we are changed yes. into his image yeah. and we go from glory to glory. I read through the Bible every year. It's always new to me. I think, what? I've read this a lot of times, but I never saw this because oh, yeah. it's a book oh, yeah. of the Holy Spirit. And Kenneth, the word is spirit and life. The thing that gives me energy is God's word. It's God's word. I mean, people say, how can you be so busy at 82 and a half? It's the word. You know, I memorize it. I meditate on it. I soak in it. It's energy to me. Praise God. Yeah. And when you study the <coughs> word, get the word involved in you and Jesus, seeing Jesus, I'm telling you, it will be energy to you. It will be life to you. And it will give you favor in places you never dreamed of. I go to the Muslim countries. I stand up in big, big healing meetings. I say, I love Muslims. And they, they clap. And I say, Muslims love me. And I clap. And then I present Jesus as a healer. Melvin, tell us, tell us some of the stories of, <laughs> of going in there. I, I'm, I'm, I'm well, so blessed. Well, Pakistan is where I've probably gone the most. But I've, I think I've ministered in 11 Muslim countries. Indonesia is the biggest Muslim country I've been in. But Pakistan, we had 250,000 the last time we were there. But I'm going back in September, we're expecting half a million. Oh my. Now that'll be a big step of faith for us. But these are people, they know about Jesus because mm -hmm. he's in the Quran, but they don't have him inside. It's Christ in us, not outside. Yeah. Yeah. In us, that's the hope of glory. So in Iran, I have a glorious opportunity to go back to Iran and present a cultural exchange in a university with a mullah that's like a leader of a mm -hmm. mosque. And so he's going to teach what the Quran says on healing. I'm going to teach what the Bible says on healing and then pray for the sick. Uh -huh. Muslims love the manifestations of healing. I mean, they are wild over it. Praise God. But it's Jesus. He's the Word. His words are spirit and life to us. They keep us young, keep us cooking, keep our memory alert, keep our bodies young. In the uh, uh, fourth chapter of Proverbs, when it says, My son, attend to my words, keep them, don't let them depart from your eyes. Mm -hmm. they are life to those that find them. Right. Not those that just kind of yeah. pass over, that find them. Yes. And health to all their flesh, yes. medicine to their flesh. Yes. So what we're talking about here, we're on a hunt. <laughs> we're finding oh, yeah. We're finding Jesus yeah. in every book. We're oh, yeah. finding healing. We're finding these things. Right. Isn't that what we've done all yeah. these years? I mean, every time something would come up, we would go find it in the Word. And, yeah. and once you found it in, in the Word, then you can say it, then you can stand on it. Right. 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 So it puts you back in that faith place. Faith right. cometh by hearing, hearing right. by the Word of God. Where Jesus said, I only say what I hear him say. Well, this, this is where you begin. Right. I only do what I see him do. Well, it's when you're looking is when you see him do. Right. So when you begin to say what he says and do what you see him do, you get his results. And Jesus said, it's the Father that dwells within me he does the works. Yes, yes. You know, this is interesting. When I go to some of these countries, you know, they're 14 hours ahead of us. And so I get up to preach and, you know, my brain is, you know, you've got jet lag, you know, you're not very spiritual, but it's not my name. It's his That's name. Right. And I just say that it's his name. And the name of Jesus works with Buddhists, Hindus, Muslims, atheists, Christians, the name works. Oh, <laughs> hallelujah. Think about what made the difference in her life. A covenant, the marriage covenant made the difference in her That's life. Yeah. Think about what made the yeah, difference yeah, yeah. in our lives. Yeah, yeah. The covenant, 
That changed everything. The marriage covenant. Not, not our marriage, but our marriage with Jesus. Yeah. Well, my, our marriage changed quite a lot, but, but I'm talking about the covenant with Jesus. And uh, the marriage covenant changed her life. Our marriage covenant with Jesus, what changed our life? We never did Absolutely. accomplish anything until after we came into oneness with Him. Isn't Praise that good? God. Yes, it is. Covenant, covenant, yes, it covenant. Is. Yes. You know, you go back to Rahab. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love her. Yeah. You just kind of glance across her name in the New Testament, but when you go find out about Rahab in the book of Joshua and, oh, and, and what she did and, and, and who she was, yeah. and you see this little... And, and the Scripture is very particular to call her Rahab the harlot. It's important that you know she was a harlot. Yeah. But God's plan, mm. and, and you can't get it by just dancing around it a little bit. You have to look for it. Oh. And when you're looking for Jesus, when you see Rahab the harlot, and she just throws herself totally and completely into God, into God's people, and she says, look, if I'm going to do this thing, you're going to take care of me. Yeah. And they did. But the big thing is God had a plan for Rahab the harlot mm -hmm. and she became Jesus' grandmother. That's right. Wow! <laughs> oh, ho, ho, the plan. Hey, he's got a plan Thank you, Lord. for you. You have to look for it. You hunt it. You believe you receive it because Jesus said everyone that asks, receive. But listen, everyone that seeks will find and everyone that knocks, it shall be open. And when you seek and look and for Jesus in every book of this Bible, you reveal himself. Well, we've had a good time this week it's in good. looking for Jesus right. in every book of right. the Bible. Right. And we're looking. Now, just, just before we went on the air, this thought uh, re really came to me strong. Here we are. We, we've talked about the Old Covenant and and really <clears throat> how wonderful and unique it is. Oh. But then you have to notice that the new one came out of this one. Right. It came out of it. Right. It's not something totally nope. separate. If it hadn't been for this, we never would have had this. That's right. And if it, ha if it had not been for the old covenant we wouldn't have Jesus. Right. Because these words, the words of God, th these words, mm -hmm. th this one hadn't happened yet. These are the words that became flesh and dwelt among us. Mm -hmm. These words here, of course they're about Jesus, but they're about us. Right. Th this is Christ us. Christ in us. Yeah. Uh, but I, it just hit me. Without this, we wouldn't have this. Right. That's right. So we don't need to be ignorant uh, of... No. I had someone say this. I heard someone say this. They said, well, uh, you know, why is... Uh, this, the, the New Testament the Old Testament, New Covenant, better promises? Yes. But this reflects on the promises that were made here. Exactly. Amen. Yes. Now, I heard Keith Moore ask this question one time. He said, why is a $100 bill better than a $50 bill? Because 
the hundred dollar bill has the fifty dollar bill in it. That's good. That's <laughs> good. I like it. Oh yeah. And the New Testament has the Old Testament in That's it. Right. Praise That's God. That's right. We need both of we them. Get, we have to have it and we have to have knowledge. We, we, we have yeah. to know. When the Dark Ages came in because the believers, Christian people that came out of the Gentile world didn't know anything about this old covenant. It's true. And by not knowing this, they didn't know anything about God. They didn't know who God was. They didn't know what He was like. Right. They, had, they had no understanding of Him at all. And so they just kind of made it up as they went along. And of course, they got a lot of it messed up. But not this time. Nope. Please. Not today. Nope. Get us in there, Marilyn. Oh, yeah. I am excited because you can really see Jesus in every book of the Bible. And when you do, it's not just seeing him, but it transforms you into his image and you go from glory to glory. And that's why I love getting people hooked on the whole book and that as you read the Bible, the Bible reads you and you're putting truth inside you that can become wisdom up here. So it's extremely essential for every Christian to be reading the Bible and letting the Bible read him. And so I love doing Old Testament because he's in every book of the Old Testament and it's astounding. And I think sometimes we just throw it all out the window. Even Malachi talks about Jesus being the messenger. Oh, yes. The last book yes. of the Bible. But today I want to do New Testament. And I really want to look at the Gospels and who Jesus is in us, in us, not just about us, but in us. So I'm going to show how the New Testament breaks into four segments, just like the Old Testament does. So if we can see that, I think if you know where you're going, you know when you get there. So look at this. We see that we have the Gospels. And we have four Gospels, and we will look at who Jesus is in those Gospels. You say, for being a school teacher, you don't write very well. You are so right. Then we have history, which is the book of Acts. And so we see the Acts of the Holy Spirit. But then we have the Epistles, which show us who Christ is in us, and then we have the revelation of Jesus, which, oh, I love because we see Jesus, who he is, and how he's coming back, and who we are in him, and how to live in the last days. Now, you say, well, everybody teaches revelation different, and so who is right? So I'm going to tell you who is right, okay? Are you ready? Well, you know, the Lord dealt with me some years ago uh, to memorize the book of Revelation. He said, I want you to teach Revelation. I said, dear Lord, I don't, know, I don't know Revelation. You want me to teach it? And so he said, I want you to memorize it. So it took me almost three years. I got discouraged and gave it up and repented and got back into it. So you say, well, who's right? Everybody's different. I'm right. <laughs> no. And so... In our second session, our last session, we will look at Jesus in the book of Revelation and you will see how to behave in the last days and the miracles he has for us at the very end of the book of Revelation. I can hardly wait to get into it. But first of all, let's look at the Gospels and who Jesus is in the Gospels. Now, let me just say this to you. When I first started reading the Bible, I thought, why are there four Gospels? You know, it all kind of tells the same story. I came in a glory one day. I said, look at this. Yeah. They all say the same. Yeah. The, Why the, do we have all four? the same story? Yeah. 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 But the more you read the Gospels, the more you see. Yes, Each amen. Gospel gives a different picture of Jesus. So when we look at the Gospel of Matthew, there is a picture of him. And these are in Ezekiel and Revelation. And it talks about a four-faced beast or four-faced animal. And it has a lion. And when you look at the Gospel of Matthew, you see Jesus as the lion of the tribe of Judah. 
because Matthew is to portray Jesus, their Messiah. So we see great authority because they were looking for the one who would come with authority. So when we look at Matthew, we see Jesus speaks to the winds and the waves. He multiplies the bread. He raises the dead. He heals the sick. He just speaks a promise or speaks the word and it works. And when we get born again, I remember when I got born again, I was 16 and I noticed that I had authority in the name of Jesus. And I thought, wow, isn't this wonderful? You know, you think I can speak to the winds and the waves. I can multiply the loaves and the fish. I can do all these things because I have Christ in me and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so you feel like a lion and that's wonderful. But when I studied Mark, you know, Mark is really a short gospel. It's just 16 chapters and it is pictured as an ox. And remember, these pictures are in Ezekiel, the four-faced creature, and in Revelation, so I'm not just pulling them out of the sky. Now, what is an ox? An ox is a sacrificial animal. An ox serves. It's a servant animal, pulls loads, carries loads. And Mark shows Jesus as a servant. Now, I'm very interested in this because I think, I wonder why Mark pictures Jesus as a servant. And I, I really believe this. You know, Mark started out with Paul, got homesick and went home, and Paul didn't want him to go back on the missionary journey. And so I think Mark felt like he was a failure as a servant. So he really gets into Jesus and how Jesus is a servant. He held their children. He washed their feet. He constantly served. Even when you go and read Revelation, Jesus serves at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Yeah, he yeah. girds himself and serves. That's right. When you see the picture of him and what he has on at the beginning of Revelation, he is girded with a golden girdle. That's what servants wear. And Jesus is always a servant. He died for us. He was raised from the dead. He ever lives to intercede for us. He is a servant. So Christ in me is not only an authority, but he is also a servant. And he calls me to serve. So I'm going to tell you a crazy picture. You know, my husband, when I would come home from a meeting someplace, you know, I want to tell him how many people got saved. What happened in a miracle way of people getting healing? How many people got baptized in the Holy Spirit? He didn't want to hear that first. He didn't want to hear that at all. He said, Marilyn, we're out of groceries. You need to wash. <laughs> he wasn't looking for a lion. He wanted an ox. <laughs> oh, Marilyn, nobody but you. <laughs> so, oh, that is so You good. know, I think Jesus wants <laughs> us, he in us, to serve others. So I'm going to tell you another kind of crazy story. I was on an airplane one time. There's a lot of turbulence. And the woman across from me was vomiting. She was real sick. So when we landed, the Lord said to me, help her get off the plane. You know, tell her you'll take her bags and walk her into the airport. So I said to her, I saw you were really sick and I want to help you. Could I carry your purse and your bag? She said, if I wanted any help, I'd ask the stewardess. And I think, wow, did I hear God? So I'm getting off the plane, walking into the airport and the glory of God hit me. Literally, I felt like I was going to fall on the ground and roll in joy. I said, Lord, why are you blessing me like this? That woman didn't even listen to me. He said, but you listen to me. That's good. Oh, that's good. And he wants us yes, to serve. Amen. And if you're too yeah, big to right. serve, you're bigger than Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I think this kind of is getting a balance out here for us. But then I'm going to skip and go to John, the next one, because I'm going to leave Luke till last. And you'll see why, so don't get nervous. When you look at the Gospel of John, it is represented as an eagle. Now I memorize this Gospel. It is so beautiful who Jesus is. And it shows us Christ in us, the hope of glory. It takes us into an atmosphere that just mm, shows Christ in you and that what you can do and who He is. And if you look in John, 
the seven I am's of Jesus are there, but he always gives a manifestation before he says, this is who I am. So in the second chapter, he turns the water into wine. Then in John 15, he says, I am the vine. In the fourth chapter, the man who comes to him about his son, Jesus says, go your way. The man goes his way, goes back home the next day. His son is healed. Now, what happened? The man went his way, believed the truth, and his son got the life. And so you see, Jesus says later in John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life, mm -hmm. but he demonstrated. So many people can tell you who they are. Well, let's prove it. Jesus proved it and then said, this is who I am. That's right. Oh, and then when you look in John 5, that man, you know, who was crippled for 38 years, and it says Jesus saw him and knew his condition. And he says to the man, would you like to be whole, spirit, soul, body? And the man is looking for an angel and a man to put him in the water. And Jesus said, arise, take up your bed and walk. And it's kind of a process healing. Arise, hey, I haven't been able to get up for 38 years. But the man, I believe, struggled and got up. And then Jesus said, take up your bed. What? I have to bend back down and pick up my bed and then walk. That means carry me and the bed. And so Jesus tells us in John 10, I am the door. You know, folks, sometimes we're looking for, what can I say, all kinds of things to get us well and whole. But look to Jesus. He's the door to oh, the miraculous. Yes. It's not my name that heals the Amen. sick. And it's not your name, it's his name. He is the door. And then as you go on in John 6, oh, it's so good. He says, I am the bread of life. And what does he do? Before he says that, he multiplies the loaves and the fish and feeds them. And then he says, I am the bread of life. So what does he do? Jesus demonstrates and he shows us who he is inside us and all around us. And that's John. It takes you into the highest atmosphere. I don't know if this is true, but I heard this, that eagles build the biggest nest and fly the highest. <laughs> if you want to fly the highest, honey, let Jesus be Jesus Absolutely. and real inside you. Now, there's some more here. And this one I really love. John 8, 12. This woman is taken in the act of adultery. And, you know, this is very sad about her. And uh, they bring her in and they want to accuse her. And... And Jesus doesn't accuse her. And he said, he that's without sin, let him throw the first stone. Well, you know, Jesus could have thrown it, but he didn't. Yes, He's not right. throwing rocks. Now, watch what happens to the woman. She gets totally forgiven. And Jesus says, John 8, 12, and it's my theme for this year. I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. I got so excited over this when I was memorizing. I said, oh, Jesus, your light is greater than any sin. You love sinners. Yes. He said, That's right. I am sad about some of this. I said, how can you be sad? This woman is free. He said, but I wanted her accusers as much as I wanted her. That is so touching. God so loves the world. Jesus loves them all, wants them all. And so we see he is the light of the world. Then if you remember when they're in the storm in John uh, 10, you know, he comes walking, gets in the ship, immediately they're at the other side. And what do we see? He's the good shepherd. When you're in the storm, and he said that, I am the good shepherd. That he will be your shepherd and take you through and get you to the other side and I want it to be immediately. It isn't always as fast as I want. But hey, he's your good shepherd. Keep him in your boat. That's really important. And then, of course, when Lazarus dies, uh, John 11, you know, he says, I'm the resurrection and the life. He says that twice, both to Martha and to Mary. And then they go down to the tomb and Jesus calls Lazarus out. Lazarus come forth. He had to call him by name. The whole graveyard could have come out. 
And he says, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus comes out and Jesus has some people who have really helped him here. And I notice when I study the miracles of Jesus, it's always the servants who get in on it. You know, they poured the water pots full of water. They drew out the wine. They were first to see it. The servants took all of the clothing off out of how, what he was bound in. Can you imagine handling a dead man who's been dead for four days and he's alive? It's the servants who get on, on the miraculous. So Jesus didn't say, well, I will be. He didn't say, I have been. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. He said, I am. I am. Faith <laughs> is the present Hallelujah. tense. So we have Praise wonderful God. John, but Luke, <laughs> Luke is a long gospel. And so when you look at Luke, it's the face of a man. Well, why? Why is that? Because folks, that's the first face you see. Because Christ in us, if we'd say, oh, I'm an ox, I go to church all the time, I clean the walks, I do everything. Sinners would say, oh, you're so dull. Or if you say, I cast out demons, I have authority, I'm a lion, they'd say, get away from me. You might think I have a demon. Or if you say, I'm an eagle, I pray in tongues, I live in a dimension of the spirit, they think, get the white coats. What do sinners <laughs> want to see? They want to see a person they can relate to. So I love to win souls. I love to do personal evangelism. And I have found, especially when I have a hairstylist in another country or someplace, you know, uh, they always have pictures of their children. I say, oh, are these your children? Oh, yes. Uh, tell me about your children. And, and, you know, they'll tell you. And then we talk maybe about recipes. And then they'll say, what do you do? And then I tell them. And then I tell them how I received Jesus. And I would say a good 70% of the time I've been able to lead that person to Christ. My, my, my. Why? My. <clears throat> because the face of a man. Folks, people aren't looking for these other things, but if they can relate to you, you can share the lion, you can share the ox, you can share the eagle. And those are the gospels. Are they wonderful? They are wonderful, aren't they? Oh, this is who Jesus is in us. I can say, grr, I have authority. Speak to the weather. <laughs> I can say, yes, I can carry their luggage. I can wait on them. And by the way, you are so gracious to me in your home. Oh, we <laughs> Knocking you, on my door and bringing me coffee. You know, oh. you know, Marilyn, I'm thinking about, <laughs> we're out of time. I, I, I'll just make this statement and then uh, m maybe the Lord will make it where we can say more about it tomorrow. But the lion cannot show love. The ox, no. The eagle, no. But the man. Oh, sweet. The man oh, sweet. can have love in his eyes. That's right. Even even uh, loving animals like, you know, like a a, a, a a fond, pet that someone's fond right, of, Adam. but still, that pet cannot reveal the love of God. It's it. There's something there that is greater, because the Bible says that through Jesus, the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart mm -hmm. by the Holy Ghost, and when that man reveals that, then the lion and the ox and the eagle anointing work. Right. You got me turned on, girl. I want to oh, preach. Good. <laughs> That's good. So this much. has been so, so wonderful. All week, uh, Marilyn Hickey has blessed us by going through and leading us to see Jesus in every book of the Bible. Ha. Huh. Oh, thank you, Lord. Jesus is every book of the Bible. Mm -hmm. He is the Word of right. God. Amen. And today, I mean, we've gone through the Old Covenant and we got into the New Testament and we talked about uh, different ones, but today we're going to get in the fun part today. So, Marilyn, let's, <laughs> let, let, let's dive in. I'm, I'm so 
I'm looking so forward to this today. Well, you know, we saw the uh, breakdown of the New Testament. So I want to kind of go over that with you. Maybe you weren't watching yesterday or something, but the New Testament breaks into four segments. Basically, it is the Gospels. Then it has history in the book of Acts. Then it has epistles, who Jesus is in you. And then it has revelation, the end time events that tie in very well with Daniel. So put your hand on your heart. Say, I won't forget. I won't forget. I won't forget. The four part breakdown. The four, four part, part breakdown. Of the New Testament. Of the New Testament. The Gospels. The Gospels. The Gospels. History. History. Epistles. Epistles. And, and Revelation. And Revelation. Now, today, we'll just look briefly at history at the book of Acts. Who wouldn't love the book of Acts? It's the Acts of the Holy Spirit. If you go through, I won't say if, when you go through the book of Acts, you ought to mark all the miracles. Every chapter has a miracle yeah. in it. Absolutely. So the history of this early church is absolutely miraculous. And that's the life we are to live. We are to live in the miraculous. This is a supernatural life. My life is not natural. From 16 on to 82 and a half, I have the most supernatural life. And it gets more supernatural with my life, my age. So I want to encourage that to you. We live in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so if you're not filled with the Spirit, get in a Spirit-filled church. Get filled with the Holy Spirit. Get a new prayer language. Yes, you amen. will just love every second of it. But then we have the epistles. Now, I like the epistles, and they're written by a number of authors. Paul writes most of them, but so does Peter, so does James, so do Jude, who were half-brothers of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And they really show us who Christ is in us, the hope of glory. And I like to memorize the epistles because mm, they are just who Jesus is. Right now, I'm doing Romans 8 again, and ah, oh, it's unbelievable, unbelievable. The law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus sets me free from the law of sin and death. What shall I say to these things? If God is for me, who can be against me. If God spared not his only son, but gave him up for us all, shall he not freely with him give us all things? All things. All Praise things. God. Praise all God. Things. God. Yes. Oh. With him. Yes. Jesus is in on it too, giving yes. them to us. But also, I want you to see the book of Revelation. Because a lot of people say, oh, I just don't read the book of Revelation. It scrambles my brain. Well, there's a whole blessing there that they're missing there. Yeah. Because it says, blessed are they that read and believe this. Exactly. Gospel. And it didn't say understand. It no, said, it just read. said read it. Read it. That's good. So even if you don't understand <laughs> That's it, a good point. read it. It's important. But let me just show you a simple way, I believe, to really understand the book of Revelation. And then I want you to see something in Revelation that really has to do with you and me today. I think we are especially blessed to be a part of end time events. You know, a lot of people think, oh, it's doom and gloom. Honey, no, no, I don't no. believe that at all. I believe it's a great victory time that we are living in. So yes, circumstances don't all look good. Yes, the newscasters aren't also positive, but we're living in this day and I'll give you a key of how to be victorious in it. Now, I'm going to show you kind of a plan. I think if you have a plan, you kind of know where you're going. So I have a plan with the book of Revelation. When you go into chapter 1, I put it as a room. And it's Jesus. You just see Jesus in this beautiful way. And so I'm setting this up like a house. So you go in, you see Jesus, you see the church, the candlesticks, all those good things. But then when you go into the second room of the house, you see chapters 2 and 3. And I believe this is church history. I think it shows you the Ephesian church was very powerful. The first hundred years, you know, of the church were very powerful, but often and I say this to you to keep you alert. Often the second generation Christian is not as on fire as those of us who got saved first. 
and they're raised in a Christian atmosphere. And so they kind of mm, know, don't know about first mm -hmm. love maybe. And so that's very important because it seems like the church of Ephesus has started good, but it kind of goes downhill. And when the church went downhill, then we go into the Smyrna church age, which Smyrna comes from myrrh, means crushed. So for almost two to 400 years, the church was very, very persecuted. But the church comes out of that in Pergamos. And so we began to see where Constantine in the history, he said, well, you know, let's worship Jesus along with everybody else. Put a cross on his flag. His mother told him about Jesus. He said, if I win with this cross on my flag, then I'll receive Jesus. So he won. And then he said, okay, we can accept Jesus with Jupiter and all the other junk. Can I say it like that? But then we go into the church of Thyatira, which seemed like also a kind of a dark time when people didn't really know the word for themselves, didn't read the word for themselves. But Sardis is the escaping one. That's what Sardis means, the escaping one. And this is the timing of Martin Luther. And mm -hmm. when people began to get into the Bible and read the Bible and so speak that's the with time the word. When God began to restore truth to the church. Exactly. Oh, exactly. That's the Sardis escaping one. Yeah. Then we go into the church of Laodicea and Philadelphia, which I feel we're in both of these church times. There is a lukewarmness, you know, kind of a falling away, but also Philadelphia's brotherly love. Isn't it something? I was raised a Methodist. What am I doing in all this Pentecost and charismatic and all of that? You know, and probably maybe some of you are Baptist background, Presbyterian, Anglican, Catholic, who knows? And you say, what is it with me? I like the Pentecostals. I like the Baptists. I like them all because the Spirit of the Lord, you know, reveals Jesus in unity. We love each other. But in this timing, we're seeing that outpouring, but we're also seeing a lukewarmness. So I, I believe personally we're in the, that day. But then suddenly in chapter four, I'm going to put this up here. We see the rapture of the church. Now you feel free to disagree with me, you know, because some people say we're going to go through the tribulation. Some people say we're going to go through half of it. Some people say we're going to go before it. Now, I don't care just so we go. You know, yes, I don't right. get nervous. I have friends that don't believe like I do. And we love to talk about the Bible with each other and disagree, but we're just not disagreeable. So I believe the church goes up in the first rapture. Me too, That's what I believe. Because the trumpet sounds, chapter 4, and then we begin to see the seven years of tribulation from heaven's view, viewpoint. We see the horses. And Revelation is quite a book of symbols and pictures. And I said that to the Lord one time. No wonder we get confused. We have all these dragons and horses and all these things going on, four-faced creatures. And, and the Lord said to me, but if I give you a picture, you can't change a picture. A horse 2,000 years from now will still be a horse. So pictures help us to picture also what he's saying to us. For, so for seven years, I see the tribulation coming on the earth. Wow, but where am I? I'm looking from up here, mm -hmm. down oh, here. Oh, praise here. God. And Thank so we see in that seven years heaven's viewpoint of the seven years of tribulation. But then also... Now we're in a tri-level house. Are you with me? Stay with me. We see that there are also people on the earth during this time of tribulation. Now, some people say to me, nobody will be saved in that time. I don't believe that. No, I don't either. Because it never says the Spirit of God is taken from the earth. Never. Right. And the Holy Spirit draws men and women. And so there will be people saved in this time. There will probably be very, very backslidden people maybe who will make a deep, fresh commitment. And so it appears to me in the middle of the tribulation will be another rapture 
of these saints. Mm -hmm. So what is God doing? We're seeing seven years of tribulation from earth's viewpoint. So this is heaven viewpoint. This is earth. And then, oh my goodness, in chapters 17 and 18, we see hell's viewpoint because we see great, great tribulation come on Satan's kingdom. How does he rule the world? He rules the world with false religion and he rules the world with greed. Mm. And so we see two Babylons here and one, you can tell is different from the other, is a false religious system. You know, works, you, some way if you work enough, you can make it. And that's what religion is, but we're not in religion, we're in relationship. Mm, Jesus so did it all for yes, us. Amen. And so now we see seven years of tribulation from three viewpoints. You say, well, I never heard of anything like that. But now wait a minute. You say, why would God do three viewpoints? Because in the mouth of two or three witnesses, everything is established. And so we're looking at it three times. Then we come out of the tribulation. Jesus comes. And so we are in the sixth room and we see some things that happen, how Satan is going to be bound for a thousand years and all of that. And so we're really into 19 and 20. And so, you know, we see that happening, the millennium, that. But then we come out of that into the seventh room, which is chapters 21 yes, and 22. Ooh, and this... <laughs> This I'm really excited about because this is for us, I believe, especially today. Now, I look at the end in chapter 22, and if you go from 12 through 20, you will see that seven times he says, come, come. And it says something else, the spirit and the bride say, come. Folks, we haven't run out of lost people. We're not just trying to make it. We're trying. We also want to minister to lost people. Yes. And so it says, the Spirit says come. So sometimes we just sit back and say, well, Holy Spirit, you deal with them. But it also says the bride. And sometimes we can get out there and try to win people and the Spirit hasn't really drawn them yet. So it's the double witness. This, I pray for God to draw people by the Spirit and then call them and talk to them. So one time I went to McDonald's <laughs> for coffee. And so I had prayed and the Lord said to me, I want you to go. I'm going to give you someone to lead to me today. So I'm sitting there drinking coffee, wondering who. I didn't see very many people. And this man comes in with all these tattoos and, you know, pretty wild looking. And he had his son, you know, and they didn't look like they'd be very open to the gospel. So I said, Lord, not them. Give me an old lady or something. <laughs> And the Lord said, them. <clears throat> so I went over to them. And remember, I've already prayed. And so I said to them, uh, would you mind if I talk to you? I was sitting here when you came in and uh, I'm a Christian. And I just felt like the Lord wanted me to come and give you a message from him. Do you have a problem? They said, no, no, we don't have a problem. And they both received the Lord. So it's the spirit and the bride. Seven times it says, come. Now, so we're in the age of inviting people to come. You say, well, that's all ages. That's right. But we're in this age. We say, come, come, come. And then in verse 22, well, let me read 20. This is the very end. He who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, Come, Lord Jesus. Yes, I think that's amen. a big prayer with all of us. Come, yes, Lord Jesus. Amen. But what do I do until he gets here? What do I do until the rapture? Okay, look at verse 21. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now, this is what we do, and this is what the Lord showed me. In 1 Peter, he talks about chapter 1, manifold, manifold grace. 
So what is manifold? It's many classes, many sizes, many kinds. So if I held up my left hand and say there's middle-sized grace, there's tall grace, there's huge grace, there's small grace, there's tiny grace. So I have many sizes of grace, right? You may be in big trials today, little trials, or all of them. But he has the grace for every trial. Oh, that's but right. then he says there are manifold trials. So there's middle-sized trials, big trials, huge trials, small trials, tiny trials. But he has the right size grace mm, to go good. with the right size trial God, until God. Jesus comes. Oh, my, my. So folks, I don't know what you're in today, but remember, it's his grace. And he all, grace takes you through and makes you victorious. Yes, and we man. need to be passionate in this day to express and share the grace of Jesus to others. So I'm just going to tell you a little quick testimony here. I was in China and we got to have a healing meeting in a three self church. So that's a church above ground. And uh, I, we had, I had 120 people with me. And the guide over them, very nice, pretty Chinese girl, you know, could speak English, probably in her 40s. So I said to her, uh, Cho, I'd really uh, like to have coffee with you. She said, I don't want to have coffee with you. And I said, well, what about lunch? She said, don't you get it? I don't want to have lunch with you. Mm -hmm. She said, I'm an atheist and you're a Christian. I said, well, come to church tonight. You know, we're praying for the sick and, you know. She said, I wouldn't even go in a church. I'm an atheist, don't you get it? And mm. you know how sometimes you just don't get it. You have it in your heart. And so I went to church and we showed that night a big meeting in Pakistan. So the next morning she came to pick up all of our people for touring. So she said, I was at church last night and I saw that video of Pakistan. I couldn't believe it. I said, well, come back tonight. We're praying for the sick. I'm not coming back tonight. You never get it. I'm an atheist. I said, well, have coffee with me. She said, I don't want to have coffee with you. I said, well, how about lunch? You'll be through with the group. I don't want to have lunch with you. But you know, in my heart, I just couldn't give up. Couldn't give up. So that night I went and we had about 3,000 people. And I looked around, I didn't see her, but I get in the van, we're leaving, this is our last night. And here she comes running out. And I got out of the van and the Lord said to me, get her and get her now. So I said, Cho, do you have Jesus in your heart? I just real blunt. No, I said, would you like to? She said, yes. And she prayed and received Jesus. Well, <laughs> She's been water baptized, her son is saved, I mean, Powerful things going on. Folks, we have grace for this time. We want to win grace the loss. God. You're not here to be a decoration only. I know you're good looking, but you're also here to be a declaration. And I just encourage you, when you go through the study guide, really look at Revelation. Really let Revelation be a revelation. And remember, you're blessed to read it but this will help you have understanding. Kenneth, I believe this is gonna be the most powerful day of winning the lost we have ever oh, seen. It's Praise the largest God. in-gathering of souls this oh, planet's yeah. ever seen. I'm, I'm totally convinced. Of I that. agree, yeah. I yeah. agree. And the thing, the fact that you got it. <laughs> she said, don't you get it? Well, you had it all along. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so right. you, you, you just keep loving Oh, and you just keep offering up. Jesus don't and you keep up. telling people you love them. <laughs> right. And it's just, it's, it's really startling sometimes how things work together for the good of those that love God, right. called according to his purpose. And that's right. us. Right. Hey, Marilyn, thank you, my darling. Oh, it yes. is so oh, wonderful. wonderful. This has been so good. So Praise glad. the Lord. I love it. I love oh, the I word. Too. Love the word. Yes, I you do, do too. too. Amen. Yeah. We have like spirits. <laughs> Amen. We'll be back in just a moment. How do you tap into a relationship with Jesus by reading the word? There are 66 books in the Bible. Where do you start? 
What do you read? How do you know a verse is about Jesus when it's not written in red letters? International author and speaker Marilyn Hickey teaches you to see Jesus in every book of the Bible. The Seeing Jesus Package, which includes the extensive study guide, volume one workbook, and two DVDs, will help lead you through the verses that reveal Jesus and his character to you in each book. Highlighting the places Jesus can be found from Genesis to Deuteronomy, the Volume 1 workbook with two teaching DVDs is perfect for small group Bible studies, revealing Jesus from Genesis to Deuteronomy. Receive his wisdom and manifest his love as you gain greater understanding of Jesus. The Seeing Jesus package leads you to an intimate relationship with Jesus that can release his wisdom, power, and love into your life today. Discover Jesus in every book in the Bible. Order the Seeing Jesus package today for only $39.95 and enjoy a savings of 20%. See God's ultimate plan for sending His Son and discover the supernatural power of God in your own life. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395 or write to us today. I don't care what you're in. I don't care what's happened to you in the past. That's all dead and gone. It is, it, it's gone. God has a plan that is bigger than anything you've ever messed up at. Or It's bigger than your life, but it is your life. Jesus then is the key yes, to that you. plan. It's the key to the door. Glory it's the to key to heaven. It's, it's the key to the book. It's the yeah, it, it's life. It's the key. He is the key of life. That's right. Now listen to this. If you will confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord, believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It didn't mention anything in there uh, just in case you hadn't done this or haven't done that. Jesus Praise did God. everything it takes. Yes. He did all of the hard part, except one thing. He could not pray your and my prayer for us. We had to come to a place where we believe in our heart. He's been raised from the dead. For with the heart man believes unto yes. righteousness with the mouth. Confession is made Amen. to salvation. We had to make the decision. We had to make it and pray it. Mm -hmm. So do this right now. Pray this with Gloria and Marilyn and me right now. Pray it out loud when you hear it. Oh God in heaven. Oh God in heaven. I believe it with all my heart. I believe, I believe it with all my heart. You raised Jesus from the dead. You, you raised Jesus, Jesus from the dead. For me. For, For me. me. Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus, Jesus come, come into, into my heart. heart. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I receive, I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I give you my life. I give, I give you, you my life. life. And I take your life. And I, I take, take your yours. life. I repent of sin. I repent, I repent of, of sin. sin. I renounce the past. I renounce the past. I renounce the devil and everything he stands for. I renounce the devil and everything he stands for. Fill me, please, sir. Fill, Fill me, me, please, sir. with your precious Holy Spirit. With your precious Holy Spirit. I receive him now. I receive him now. To overflowing. To, to overflowing. overflowing. I receive my supernatural prayer language. I receive, I receive my, my supernatural prayer language. And I'm grateful to you. And I'm grateful, and I'm grateful to, you. to you. And I praise you for it. And I praise, and I praise you, you for it. it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you prayed that with us today, I want to send you this little book to help you get started reading your Bible and where you can do get into all of these things yes, that we've been talking about here. And this is, this is really how simple it is. You don't need to be struggling with this book. And I'll send it to you free and postpaid. It's called He Did It All for you. Just yes. go to kcm.org, request it. Like I said, it's free. Or all, you, the address is on the, on the screen. Any way that's there, you can get your hands on this. Do it. Gloria and Kenneth Copeland has sown a lot of seed into our life, just little booklets. And, and I know you would think, well, a $2 booklet, how could it change? It changed our lives tremendously. I use the booklets for finances. I've used them for health. 
um, the CDs that Gloria has out for healing. Um, I've used the CDs over and over, you know, to a point where I was um, diagnosed with something called cervical stenosis. And uh, one of my discs had slipped, split my spine, um, caused pressure on a nerve, and I couldn't walk for weeks. Um, I put her CDs in my ear night after night, day after the day, and I was supernaturally healed the day before I was supposed to have um, emergency spinal surgery. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. There's no use in us fading in our minds and becoming weary in this day and at this time than which we are involved. No, sir, no, ma'am. Glory to God. Why? Because we have access to all Jesus has and everything the Father has belonged to Jesus and we're joint heirs with him. Glory to God. October 16th and 17th, get involved at the 2015 Living Victory Anaheim Faith Encounter with Kenneth Copeland and Kelly Swisher in Anaheim, California. October 16th through 17th, Terry Copeland Pearsons invites you to the Spirit-Led Prayer Conference in Red Deer, Alberta, Canada. The 2015 Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign, November 12th through 14th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia. For more information, go to the KCM website. Friday is always offering day on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast because that's what the Word of the Lord came to glory in me years and years ago to conduct it in that manner. And <clears throat> here it, here's, here's God's purpose in that. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 6, let him that is taught in the Word communicate or respond to him that teaches in all good things. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life. That's right. That Greek word translated life is zoe, which means the very life of God. Now, Jesus taught in the fourth chapter of Mark specifically that the sower sows the Word. And that's what we're talking about here, the sower sowing the Word. Satan comes immediately to steal the Word. Now, what the Word here is outlining is when you sow to the Spirit if you respond to the, the one that sowed the Word and you respond to that and you sow into it, then you begin to reap zoe and you don't fall into that trap where you have no root in yourself. We've heard things this week. <laughs> I've, I've heard things this week that not only stirred me up, but I'm... I'm going back into the Scripture again, and I'm looking for things that, that Marilyn stirred up in me, then some things I hadn't heard before, and I, I'm, I'm after that. Well, as I sow into that, it brings root, and it, then the root of the Word begins to grow inside me, and it becomes my revelation, and it becomes my Word, and it will do what Jesus said. It will produce a hundredfold. God. And so that's the reason God said, so right immediately, so right back into whomever taught it to you. Father, we thank you. Thank you and Lord. we pray over yes. every person in the sound of my voice throughout yes. the, this whole radio, television mm -hmm. audience Thank all you, over the world. Jesus. Yes. And I'm asking you to reveal to them what their part of this sowing is, reveal to them how to do it and mm -hmm. how much and so forth. That is your business with them. And we pray over it. Thank you, Lord. For a dynamic return. Yes. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now listen, if you missed any of the broadcast, go to kcm.org and watch them or download them. Free, it doesn't cost you anything. Download it, get back in it, go over it and over it and over it. Get involved with, with the big book, Seeing Jesus in Every Book of the Bible. Amen. We'll see you next week. Until then, this is Kenneth and Gloria and Marilyn reminding you again, 
that Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. Kenneth Copeland Ministries is here for you. Watch the Believer's Voice of Victory anytime on our website, kcm.org. Remember to download your free copy of the study notes at kcm.org notes. You'll have access to all the scriptures, prayers, and key teaching points for each of the broadcasts. Continue to grow in the Word with this week's product offer. Be sure to order yours today. Build your faith with these Word-based teaching materials. Jesus has opened the door for your victory.